In this video, I want to talk about one metric that is used to help analyze the cash position of a company. And we'll use that statistic to compare Southwest's cash position to other airlines. Now, I really believe the best place to evaluate cash is through the cash flow statement. But since we're on the balance sheet and this is relevant to what we talked about in the last video, I thought it was worthwhile to just uh, point it out. And that measure is called the uh, current ratio. So I'm going to write it here if I can find my pen. So the current ratio, current ratio is simply the ratio of two numbers we just talked about in the last video. It's the ratio of the current assets to the current liabilities. So in the last video, we talked about Southwest having $4.7 billion in current assets seems like a big number, but then when you go back and look at the current liabilities, it doesn't look quite so big when you realize they have $5.5 billion in current liabilities. But then we added this caveat that you know, airlines are unique and they have this, um, this air traffic liability, and for Southwest, it's almost $3 billion of their current liabilities are in this ATL. Um, so you just have to take it with a grain of salt. But at any rate, when you go on, on financial sites, and we're going to go look at one right now, or we're going to look at some data from one, uh, this current ratio is often reported, and it's nice to look at it in comparison to other airlines. So what I've done is I've gone out to Yahoo Finance, and they, they summarize this information really, really nicely. Um, and I've pulled out for the comps that we've been using the cash balance and the current ratio. And these are the two metrics that Yahoo gives around uh, current assets and cash on the balance sheet. There's more for the cash flow statement, but we'll, we'll get to those. So the first thing we have here is the total cash balance. And we see Southwest here, and that's the cash balance we saw on our balance sheet before. So remember we said there, cash balance was 3.3 billion. We added the two cash and short-term investments together. Uh, and then we said, well, you know, seems like a lot of money, but how do you, how do you know if that's enough or not enough? Well, one thing you can do is compare it to other airlines. So Southwest has 3.3 billion. Uh, next to it, you have United Airlines. They have almost twice as much cash. Well, twice as much cash, but it's a much bigger airline, so you have to take that into consideration. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, you have Spirit that only has half a billion dollars in cash, but they're a much smaller airline. Delta is about the same size as United, but they only have four billion compared to United. So still, these cash balances are uh, interesting, but without some more information, it's hard to know what to make of them. And that's where the current ratio comes in. It, it takes the current assets, not, the, not just the cash, but it takes the current assets, divides them by the current liabilities, and then you get this, really this percentage. So I've put the uh, formula here for you. The current ratio is the current assets by the current liabilities. And I took Southwest's numbers right off of their balance sheet. So the current assets were 4.773 right here. And then the current liabilities were 5.546 and that was right down here and if you divide those two things uh, one by the other you get 0.86 and that's exactly what Yahoo had for the current ratio of MRQ is the the most recent quarter so now that tells us something instead of looking at the absolute numbers by looking at the current ratio we can conclude that Southwest has sufficient assets, sufficient current assets to satisfy 86% of their current liabilities. Current assets are uh, assets that, that can be turned into cash within a year. Current liabilities near, need to be satisfied within a year. So Southwest has 86% of the assets needed to cover those liabilities. Then when you look at other airlines, you can start to see um, uh, some differences. And United, while they have a big cash balance, they have even less uh, than, than Southwest does in terms of their ability to cover their um, current liabilities. 
Delta even even less. And then you have uh, U.S. Airways here with a number greater than one. So they have more current assets they, than they need to cover their liabilities and so on. And then the, the outlier here is Spirit Airlines. They have twice as many current assets as they need to cover their current liabilities. So that tells you something. I mean, take it with a grain of salt for, for a couple of reasons. One is the capital structure of these airlines are much different. Spirit, and we're going to get to this, Spirit is very unique in that they have zero debt. So whenever you're looking at Spirit compared to other airlines, you have to consider that they have a very different uh, capital structure. Uh, the other thing to consider is, in general, you would want to see a number greater than one, right? You would want to see a company having... Uh, a company with more current assets than it needs to satisfy its liabilities. Otherwise, it, it kind of sounds like that's a problem, right? But the airline industry is um, unique in this matter. One, because of the, the ATL that we talked about. And two, well, I guess airlines or other companies, this, this is, it, this is uh, similar. You rarely really get into the, into the situation where you need to cover your current liabilities with your current assets. So to just look at a number less than one and, and conclude that's a problem is really jumping to a conclusion. So take it with a grain of salt. It's worth looking at, particularly as you look across um, the comp set. Uh, but again, as we as we get into the cash flow statement and some of the measures around cash flow, I think that's the more relevant place to um, analyze and evaluate an airline's, not only their cash position, but their ability to manage cash.